Hey YouTube, this Southern Knights coming back at y'all with another video. But I have a question. I was thinking about, you know, these next four years under this alleged new administration. And notice I said alleged for a reason. And you can go back to the video I just did to know why I say that. But I want to know all of this stuff that took place in the beginning of 2020 and the beginning of 2021, how all of this heavy, dense energy is going to survive the next four years. I want to know all of this stuff that's going on. Can all of this, all of the situations and all of the stuff that's going on, can it survive the next four years? Or it's going to collapse in the beginning of the middle or right to the end of Joe Biden administration. Because you got to think about it like this. You have all of this energy, this energy that's not going to be resolved no time soon because what I mean by that is y'all pretty much left a group of people hanging by the limb, <laughs> you know, and pretty much. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how to word this correctly so y'all can understand why I'm coming at without being too complex with it. You know, y'all pretty much hang hang. You know, you pretty much hang the people by the limb and pretty much moved on like nothing didn't happen. I'm seeing a lot of people moved on as if nothing happened in this country as if we didn't like to have a civil war a couple of days ago, as if the Corona stuff never happened, as if, you know, the people cropping up for pretty much an all out brawl in this country. And ever since Joe Biden came in, you know, everybody have this, happily ever after feeling as if everything that just happened is officially over and we can move on and we can be peace and we can have unity and all of this stuff right here. And I don't think that the people who's pushing that, you know, they got to be living in a delusional or alternate reality to think that, you know, and that's just my opinion. You know, that's just what I'm seeing. I don't think that they thinking everything through right now or thinking correctly, thinking that these people you had hanging by the limb is just going to lay down and just pretty much just say, okay, we accept this. What happened? We accept, we accept the alleged or quote unquote voter fraud or whatever. You know, like I said, I'm I'm just bringing different scenarios. It was so much stuff happening in 2020 and the beginning of 2021 that I can't even remember. I can lay it down, but y'all pretty much know what, you know, took place throughout 2020 and 2021. So here's the thing. Here's the main thing that I'm asking. Could all of this, this energy survive the next four years? Could all of this stuff pretty much go away as a lot of people thinking right now that it's gone away and, you know, we won this a victory and stuff like this, you know, think about the individual person right now i want y'all to look at this it was a serial killer 
in Brooklyn, New York, that just went on a killing spree, killing old women. Now, that was just one individual. And you know it's thousands, if not millions of individuals just like him in this country. And people that properly think like him, even though they haven't carried it out yet, due to the fact that the maybe the lack of opportunity. So imagine all of these people that in this country that have that type of mind state as the guy. I think I'm it was in Brooklyn or Bronx, so it was something like that. I don't you know, I don't want to give y'all the wrong information. Y'all can go research that it was in one of those boroughs, but in New York City. But what I'm trying to really say here is you got a lot of individuals that probably think like him or carried out the same crime as him. Remember the DC sniper? Ted Bundy? You know, and the list goes on all the way to the 15 and 1600s, you know, where they had, you know, the pretty much serial killer mentality or you had people that were just waiting for something to go down in this country to get the opportunity to unleash those same desires that that man in New York had when he went on the killing spree. So if let's say all of this energy don't survive this next four years, I want y'all to think of something right quick. You have all of these individuals out here. You have a lot of crazy people in America right now that pretty much has access to a no holds bar situation if the economy collapse or uh, we come into a lawless society. You see what I'm saying? So you got all of these people that really, in their mind state, oh, that could never happen. We always going to be pros prosperous. We will never fall. The economy is good and all of this stuff. But not to know just a case that this situation, all of this situation that's going on right now, don't survive this next four years. And we find ourselves into like a civil war, world war or a collapse or something like that. You have to remember it's millions of people like that guy in New York that's out here that's going to be running rampant, not to mention the prisons. And I'm not saying all people in prison are bad because you got a lot of innocent people that's in prison right now for unconstitutional crimes. And they pretty much in there with those people that I'm referring to right now that don't have, I don't give a care mentality that any get an opportunity, they gonna run rampant. Serial killer, rapists, murderer, psychos, and all of this stuff. You know, I'm talking about the real life horror movie type dudes or type people that's in this country right now waiting to be activated at any given moment when this place go to crap. These are the people that you're going to be exposed to. And nine times out of ten, these people are seeking, going to seek revenge. And you're going to have everybody that's going to have their own little purpose to achieve in this country when the crap hit the fan. All of these people is going to have a revenge factor with them. And most of them are going to pretty much going to carry it out or they're going to die trying. This is what you're dealing with right now. And I think a lot of people that in this happy-go-lucky state 
don't understand who they really deal with. Not to mention on top of that, the everyday people that pretty much got railroad on the Republic and the conservative size, you know, then you have the liberal side that's pretty much still have they vendettas and they revenge tactics that they carry out right now with the protests that's still going on right now. So you have all of these people with different fruits with each other and different conflicts coming together on this land right here called America. And not to mention, not just North America, North, Central, South. And then you got, you know, like I said, South America, you got a caravan coming up here. Now you have all of a different element that people is not used to coming from South America and coming into this land also. Then you're going to have people from Canada for whatever reason something might happen up there where they might come down here or you're going to have people up there go, down here is going to try to escape to Canada. Now, a lot of people said, well, you ain't coming in my country. You ain't doing this. You ain't bringing this. But when you have a hundred thousand people moving in unison, it, it ain't too much you can do to stop them. You know, I, I what what can you do? You can send a local police, but if it's like 20 to 100,000 moving in unison, you know, the only thing that probably can stop them is probably a coalition or some sort of military that have allies. That's the only thing that probably can stop them if you use it, it but it's going to have to be probably a armed conflict. So that's basically what I'm trying to bring to y'all right now with what's going on in this country because a lot of people that's born in the 80s and 90s even in the 2000s they they not used to they used to everything being the way it is right now the peace come everything functioning but uh, none of them didn't been through dumb hor horrible and devastated histories like world war one and world war two you know but you probably have some people that experienced the vietnam war or the iraq war and those people can come back here and tell you that war is the last thing that you want to be with because a lot of them guys on medication they war torn you know got little conditions here or there mentally and they'll tell you that you know war is the last thing you want to really you know take flight to or really want to you know transpire in this country due to the fact that a lot of people don't really be the same after a conflict or in the war, even in, in even even in the Civil War, you know, a lot of people starved in the South. A lot of people died of hunger. A lot of people land got took and stolen. The crops got destroyed. You know, indigenous people that was down south pretty much had millions of acres of land got taken away from them, and one day got occupied. So ask yourself. Will those, will the people in this town right here, will, will they be able to stand, you know, will they be able to stand in this times that the times that happened back then? I don't think so. They wouldn't be able to handle, handle another civil war or be introduced to a dreadful time like in American history. In this modern day history, I don't, they not prepare for that. But at the same time, they are heading down that path. So you got a lot of people out here that's pretty much still entitled, got this entitled narcissistic mentality, 
you know, they cry and whine if they don't get what they want. They really, you know, they be pretty much be all over the place protesting, you know, the whole want their rights, even though you have a people out here that get anything that they want for the government, but they still out here protesting, you know what I'm saying, with the whole ideologies and all of this stuff like that. And they haven't seen those times yet yet and when those times come all of those people and psychos that i just brought to you and name in this video is going to be key players in this collapse or fall of this current empire these are the people that you're going to have to deal with and I want to know, is the entitled people that used to getting everything handed to them on a silver platter, is they really ready to deal with that type of climate? Or they just going to pretty much end it all and check out of here? I'm just going to be honest. You see what I'm saying? I think a lot of them is probably going to check out early. It's happening right now. So you could tell a lot of people can't deal with the pressure that's really taking place right now so if they checking out right now and you know the boot really didn't kick them properly in the behind yet what do you think when the boot get far up in they behind what do you, what do you think gonna happen you know and that goes to show you like i said before a lot of people with these titles and all of this stuff is only an illusion and I'm saying all of these folks out here that gave themselves these titles, patriots and, you know, say independence and, you know, um, this and I'm that and all of this stuff. The titles is basically, if you take away the titles, none of those folks live those titles. And that's what you saw in the beginning of this year. And I'm not saying everybody is like that, but it, it's a high number of people that pretty much failed to carry out them titles that they was given. Why? Because the responsibility came with them titles. And finally, they had to live out that responsibility that come with them titles and they didn't produce crap. So. All of these folks, you know just rolling with the flow, you know, basically, and, and you're going to see this administration is, they probably going to be nitpicking at the other nations again right now, which I think at this particular time, that's not going to be a wise decision to really do. Like you remember Hillary Clinton, Russia was on her mind 24 seven, Russia, this, Russia, that, Russia, this, Russia, that. This time she might need to sit the hell down. You know, she might not even want to mention Russia right now. You know, I'm just being honest. Russia should not be in her vocabulary at this particular time. If you see the artillery and manpower that they have over there at this current time, you know, like I said in my last video, the only way we will probably get through these four years, they might need to take the foreign policy off the tables dealing with war and conflict and let them and let Russia, China handle the Middle East how they want to handle it. Let Iran go ahead and build a military how they want to build it. Let Korea build a military how they want to build it and create treaties with these countries as long as they don't infringe with other people, territories and stuff like that. I think that's how this administration should handle the foreign policies. But all of that stuff that they was doing under Obama, you might need to sit down, you know, and I'm talking to them directly if they run across this video, you know, because that's my advice to y'all. If y'all decide to start a conflict, if y'all see the weaponry that these guys have over here, Unless you don't care and you want to cause chaos, I mean, if you want to do that, then be my guest. But 
I'm just telling you how to resolve this issue for the next four years because the stuff that's going on right now is not going to survive the next four years. I don't care who in office, who you put in your cabinet, who or what come before or after that, it's not going to survive the next four years if this energy that's going on right now collide with the foreign policies that I think y'all going to try to do, which is to start wars with Russia or get into the conflict of the Middle East right now. I say let them handle the issues and everybody stay out of it and deal with the problems that's here right now. This is how I think we or they will survive this next four years without everything going to crap. So that's just my opinion on it, you know, because trying to, you know, go against nations right now, that's not a wise decision due to the fact that, you know, the way I'm seeing the chess movers being played, you know, a world coalition going to pretty much going to be knocking from your doorstep, you know, and, pretty much take the great advice I'm giving you from a more because you know the history and you know our history, you know the treaty that's pretty much in the Library of Congress right now, which I have a copy of, you know, with your seal on it. And pretty much take my advice and take it for he. The next four years, I think, you know, Y'all should deal with the issues here and ask for the foreign policies. That's how I think, think y'all should handle the foreign policies. Basically, don't mention nothing about war or Russia this and Russia that and uh, elections and all of this stuff right now because those guys over there is not playing. Because over here, if, that, if this place ended up collapsing, you know, you got, you're going to deal with a lot of crazies out here. That's pretty much the base of this video or uh, basically who you going to be dealing with for, <laughs> you know, or uh, how long it took, you know, everything get back to normal or somebody come later on and restore the order. You know, that's pretty much what you're going to get in this country right here alone. So take the walls off the table, deal with the issues here, and you may survive, this energy may survive the next four years. You know, maybe. Because right now, the chess move that y'all made, I don't see nobody helping y'all fight in this war if y'all were to do a draft pick. I don't see it. Because uh, Trump probably would have been a better candidate for a lot of patriots and conservatives that probably will volunteer into the military and fight the conflict that y'all created since the probably the early 70s or 80s or even 1945, you know, even though y'all allies with Japan and all of that now, but... But yeah, the chess move y'all made, I don't see nobody helping y'all fighting this war. I don't, you know, see black people, the way they've been treated for the past 150 years after the Civil War. And I definitely don't see white America, quote unquote, patriots helping you fight in this war either due to the fact they feel like they've been railroaded during the elections and how they pretty much is labeled terrorists now. And that's a conflict within y'all ranks that pretty much ain't know the conflict that had to be settled eventually or whether it in the chaos or whether it, you know, it comes to an agreement. But as far as right now, you know, it might be a good thing for Biden to get in for certain people, 
you know, because they probably see that he might make a few changes on their behalf and some benefit and some don't. Like I said, it's all depending on what your foundation is and what your foundation is built upon. Your foundation might be built upon a democratic foundation and another person might foundation might be built on a republic foundation. So yeah. So I'm just basically giving y'all a few scenarios and a few dynamics that y'all can look into to measure out the energies that's going on right now domestically. Then you have the foreign policies that I think soon going to come up in probably like a couple of weeks, you know, just wait for, you know, Russia going to be on the top menu or it's going to be North Korea. It's going to be somebody, you know, it's always that same playbook, you know, but with that said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. And that's something to think about where y'all go about y'all day and you see people laughing and cheering on, you know, and pretty much saying Trump, ha ha Trump loss and all, you know, that's, I guess it's all fun to play and all of this stuff like that. But you know that you have some people that take it a lot more serious than you might will. You might look at it as a, you know, somewhat not serious situation because you probably looking at Trump as a character that's playing out a certain movie. So it's like, or it's a trendy topic to where people just wanted him out the white house just because the people around him or the media gave them that narrative to get them out of the white house. Because even though he out of the white house, you still got, people like Antifa and, you know, Black Lives Matter still protesting, you know, but I thought the main objective was, was to get them out, was to get Trump out, but yet they still going. So that too is a energy that they can't necessarily turn off because you got everybody juices flowing right now in this country. Even though Trump is out of office, they still protesting, you know, and they still burning and fighting the police and stuff. So this is stuff that you can't really turn off, man. Like, this is why y'all create these situations, man. You're not going to be able to turn them off like that. You know, you're not going to be able to turn them off like that. They're just like somebody, you know, if a person becomes a serial killer, you know, and start killing, if they killed the 150 people, you think that person can just go back into society and live the way he lived? No, he going to have the instinct. It's going to become an addiction. When you do stuff over and over, if it, is it becomes addiction, it ain't no different than alcoholism. It's an addiction, you know? So you chilling by this person and he looking at you funny, ready to knock your head off because you don't know that that's what he used to do for fun to, you know, pretty much kill that urge that he has temporarily. No different than the guy in New York. And I'm going to have to find out, I think it was Brown, Brown's really New York or something like that, where the guy, he was a serial killer and he killed like three old women. And basically he was, basically treating them nice running errands for them and stuff like that. Like, uh, you know, appearing to be the nice guy. I'm telling you, this is the people that y'all dealing with in this country right here, you know? And when this place ever fall, you're going to have front row seats to all of these psychos and crazies that's in this country. On top of them, talking about taking away your form of protection, which is the second amendment, which is going to make it a lot worse. So yeah, but on a good note, it's all about whether you're going to take a stand or not. Is you going to take a stand and where are you going to take a stand at? You know, so with that said, I'm Southern Knights signing off. Catch y'all in the next video. Peace.